Using all my inner strength, suppressing the anxiety. I'm about to have a panic attack. It's a rhyme and a mechanic of rap. You slave minded, his manacles back. I'm lean muscle, you just animal fat. My team hustle, this is actual fat. No hypothesis, try stopping, it's trying to figure that hot pot. What's really good, ladies and gentlemen? It's the OG Boricua Dandada, a.k.a. Don't Ever Matter. I'm here with none other than my brother, Mr. Evil Onsay. Evil Onsay, what's good, my brother? I apologize to the to our fans who listen to the show. I cannot find my glasses anywhere, so I can barely see anything. So please do not be scared if I, if I scare you right now with my ugliness. I just can't see. I, I see everything's blurry right, right now. And you know what? I, I got my I got my nieces ten and seven looking through the house to see if they find them. <laughs> They're oh, on a treasure hunt. Yeah, hopefully they don't step on them by mistake. So. Oh man, hell no! Listen, glasses are too expensive. So let, let's 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 talk about the bombshell, man. Talk about the bombshell. Oh my God! So listen, to me, one of the biggest names in the industry had just been released which I know everybody is talking about it, Bray Wyatt. Um, this surprised me for multiple reasons, and I'm going to say exactly why it surprised me, because Vince McMahon is usually really, 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 really smart with his money. And Bray Wyatt, the fiend, is such a cash cow for the WWE universe that I didn't see this coming. We had heard some stuff not too long ago that we were talking about, and we were like, nah, I doubt it, because the cash cow that is the fiend, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt, I'm going to say it that way because the being what we just had, um, has been released. And this surprises me because the merchandise, sales, anything that this guy has is just money from the championship belts to the mask to the face with the lantern thing, the toys. Um, what is your – when you heard this, what, what was your, your take on this? Well, bro. I never heard of it. You sent me the the, the actual post pick of it, and I I was shocked. I'm still shocked because before he was released, I was shocked when Braun Strowman was released. That was my big shocker out of anybody in the last year. I said, "Wow, they released Braun Strowman, and he had just had done something that Monday night on Raw." And then gets released a couple of days later. I'm like, wow. And now Bray Wyatt, bro, is complete utter shock to me. Like like I told you before we started the pod, I'm thinking it's something maybe internal, personal stuff inside the company that we don't know. And we might find out later in the future for this. Because like you said, Uncle Vince is all about the money. The fans are, are a, a distant to anything that he does. It's all about trying to get that money in as much money as possible. It's all about me. It's Uncle Vince, period. That you know, let, let's be honest. It's business, it's about money. That that's the bottom line. If if you're not making any money in the business that you have, you're gonna be out of business in no time, period. And he gives enough stuff to the fans called the, the WWE universe. But it's all about the money. This move, something must have happened inside. Because he not right now, somebody's messing with his money right now. Like you said, he's making money on this merchandise, bro. And now the fans just came back after 18 months. And the fans are there now. And you see Raw and SmackDown, 15, 20,000 people out there just going crazy. And the fiend is not there. Uh, something happened. I'm sorry. You know, and it it goes the crazy part, right? Like, and we were talking about this briefly before we just jumped on. And I I, I want to get this all out there with zero hate. I will admit I am such a Bray Wyatt fan. This is no secret. I love Bray Wyatt. Love his work. I'm not one of those people that are huge into the whole cinematic thing. But what he's done from Husky Harris to Bray Wyatt has been nothing short of phenomenal, right? Everybody knows that I'm not making no breaking news here. But now the biggest question is, where does he sign? Now, obviously, I'm a huge MLW fan. That's my show of interest. I love it. It's the best product to me, personally. 
But now, when I was thinking this, I was like, damn. If I was Impact Wrestling, right, I would say, you know what? It's time that we have to put all our chips into something, right? Somebody. Bray Wyatt is such a megastar that I would pull the truck up and drop the bags, you know, to his front door talking about, yo, please come sign with us. We're going to put the yes. belt on you. Huh? I say, yes, yes, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would put the belt on him day one, even though I am anti that. He's that level of character that you say, all right, we got to go all in, pull the trigger on him. Because we just seen one of Impact's biggest moments in so long where Jay White from the Bullet Club from New Japan came, got zero pop in the fake Impact zone. So yep. if, if, if Bray Wyatt pulls up anywhere, everyone knows who Bray Wyatt is. Now, here goes the crazy part about what I'm about to tell you, why that makes no sense. Even though you can stick him in decay, it, it's close to his gimmick, and it's fire. But the problem is, Impact Wrestling and just say Ring of Honor and MLW, three biggest shows outside of AEW and WWE that are light years above them. Don't forget the NWA. And well, I would put NWA under Ring of Honor and, and but it is it's a it's still uh it's yeah. still a legit it's still a legit professional wrestling company. So when you look now, the only difference before a week ago between Impact Wrestling and MLW was the micro brawlers figures, which now MLW has micro brawlers figures. I'm not plugging MLW, I'm just trying to explain to you the difference. Right now MLW is having a women's division. They have the Azteca Underground thing. They have a TV uh, deal. Everything I just named, Impact Wrestling has, right? Now, when you look at AEW, AEW has legit wrestling figures. AEW has all types of marketing. AEW has all types of, you know, they have the big network. They have everything popping right now. They right now, I would say, I don't want to say at the WCW level because it's, what are they only on their second year, uh, AEW? Bro, yeah, it's, it's the second year coming up in October. It's, I'm sorry, I have to disagree with you on that one. It's actually WCW 3.0 right now. After I just saw Chao Eddie Guerrero, Drew, I mean, I'm sorry, Chao Guerrero and uh, Alistair Black now being Malachi Black. And now the rumors of Daniel Bryan, you know, Bryan Danielson and CM Punk coming in. Probably you know end of August, September, or whatever. Wait, wait, wait. You, no, said, it's, it's, you said Daniel Bryan came in? Well, no, you know, that's the rumors. You know, Brian Danielson oh, oh, and CM yeah, yeah, yeah. Punk, the rumors coming up in the next month or two, you know, old hour, whatever they call it. This is WCW 3.0, basically, is oh, this. Oh, and, I, and, I, and, and I'm and I, and I'm literally hating right now on it because it looks just like WCW to me. They're bringing all the big stars that Uncle Vince is letting go. Period. It's this has WCW. that. This has that ninety-five, ninety-six feeling of WCW right now. Oh hell no! You know, like, this has this has that ninety-nine, two thousand, two thousand and one feeling when the NWO came in. Uh, that that's no, no, that's NWO, that's NWO that was feeling. Ninety-five, ninety-six, bro. Hell no! Yeah, hell yeah! yeah. Oh. Was in the, no way no. that was in the two. Bro, my son was my son was born in 2001. NWO was way before him. Okay, so I want to say 98, 99. I'm still saying 96. I think 90, no later than 97. Huh. Let me let well, me check because but yeah, but the, the point I'm trying to make, and I'll check this, is WCW all over again. I'm sorry. If oh. if, if they do get Dino Bryan and CM Punk. It's WCW all over again. No, I, I feel you, but what I'm saying is is a guy like uh, Bray Wyatt, who's been on WWE, who has all the merchandise you could have a hat, why would he go below that? And I'm a fan of MLW. Trust me, I would love him to come in and Aztec Underground. And I know I, I mentioned that to somebody, and they were like, oh, he's not Latino. I was like, all right, well, ML uh, Lucha Underground had non Latinos in yeah. MLW. Matt Cross, Matt Cross, 
Mark Cross yeah, is that, uh, Azteca on the ground. And NWO was from 96 to 2000. Well, 96, see? 96 when they all started coming over. Yeah, through 2000. That, that's when that, they, they got done. Okay, so uh, it, to my main point is I think that Ray White's value is way too above anybody else besides AEW. You know what I'm saying? Like, it does not make sense for him to join Impact. It doesn't make sense for him to join MLW. It doesn't make sense at all for him to join Ring of Honor. So where else could he go to match his value? And I'm not saying these companies can't throw the bag at him. And listen, if I'm NWA, Ring of Honor, MLW, or or Impact Wrestling, I'm yo, get me his wife, get me his his agent, get me whoever I got to talk to to find out yeah. what, how many heroes I got to get to get Bray Wyatt. It's the smart money. Because Bray Wyatt comes in your company and sales go up. The only problem is what sales are we talking about? Right now, of course, I'm always going to say my number one company be Impact Wrestling. I would love for Bray Wyatt to go to Impact Wrestling. If not, MLW being second and um, Ring of Honor being third. He'll never go to NWA, so we can take that out. But right now... The biggest threat to WWE and Uncle Vince is AEW and Tony Khan. So my gut and the majority of the thing, he'll go to AEW because it's on the biggest TV network other than USA Network is TNT. You can find TNT in every market of every cable company, uh, satellite dish, every... uh, um, app that you have like Sling TV or Roku, TNT is there. Unfortunately, Impact Wrestling owns their own channel, which is Access Channel. But unfortunately, it's not available in every damn market, which kills Impact Wrestling right there. Ring of Honor is a, is a syndicated show to St. Clair Broadcasting, so that's out of the, the question right there. And the way is fight, so Oh, you got to pay four ninety five a month to watch NWA, and then you have uh, MLW who is still coming back from the COVID, and right now it's either on, on Being Sports and Vice TV. I will say YouTube, but now they're actually working on something that Kurt Bauer hasn't an- announced yet about getting everything out of YouTube. So I I oh, think it's going to be the app. Yeah, I'm hoping this app, and I'm hoping is between four ninety five to nine ninety nine, where you have all the stuff from two thousand and two, all those shows there, including their future weekly shows. If you don't get Vice TV, if you don't get uh, Being Sports, and hopefully you can watch also their pay per views when they come in at the end of the year again. So I'm pushing for that. But right now, as much as I, I would love Bray Wyatt to be Impact and then hopefully bring his brother, you know, Bo Dallas and bring uh, um, Curtis, uh, I'm sorry, it was, oh God, what was his name? Uh, the Mr. Perfect Curtis Henning's son, you know, uh, Axel Curtis or whatever the hell they called them, Curtis yeah, Axel yeah, yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, I would, I would love for his son to, to come and you could build a nice little faction there of those guys there at Impact. Unfortunately, yes. Does Impact have money or Anthem has money? Yes. But do they want to go to Anthem where everything is taped one month ahead or whatever? Or do you want to go to AEW where everything is live now just like Uncle Vincent's company? And they're going to give you that money. But you're going to be stuck in this big show with everybody coming over from Uncle Vince's company, but now you have a new show coming out starting in August on Fridays, what, Resurgence is called, I think, so now you can, Resurgence or something, so now you're going to have two shows, Wednesdays and Fridays, and now Fridays you're going to battle uh, in SmackDown now, you're going to go head to head with SmackDown on Fridays now as your second show, and then you have two shows on YouTube, and one of the shows, AEW Dark, is going to hit 100 episodes this upcoming Tuesday. So 
they're doing something where you know that they, they, you they, they're getting visual they're seeing you four times a week in four different shows nobody else has that except not even not even WWE has that and, and they won't even believe in something like that to do something like that so you know, right now AEW is the way to go unfortunately that that's the way to go right now Ex- it, exposure wise exposure wise merchandise wise you get there right now i just saw a chef on tv five minutes later your shirt is already out on their website and you're like god damn they already have a t-shirt already on sale the show not even ended like even two minutes ago and they already have a t-shirt for alistair black or a christian cage when he came in you know chavo guerrero jr um um um, what well, uh, the kid's name? Uh, Charles Flair's boyfriend. I forgot his uh, name already. Right. El, El, El Idolo. They already, they already have merchandise for him already. Five minutes after the show is over, dude, that's crazy. The machine about getting that money is crazy. And there's people out there who are waiting to get that shit. I, I'm pretty sure the Michael Brothers for for MLW sold out. Yeah, because yeah. everybody was. Hammerstone just dropped a new t-shirt on MLW, and I already caught that bitch already when I saw that. I said, oh, shit, and what, what, Kurt, uh, Hammerstone new t-shirt? Yep, sign me up. Take my money right now. I already got the t-shirt, and I'm waiting for it to come in. It's all about the money. It's all about the interest. They know how to draw us, the fans, in. They divide either you like us, where we watch all wrestlings and we support everybody, or you the sheep of WWE. AEW, and you argue on Twitter against each other. Oh, this show is better. This show sucks. Blah, 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 blah. Look what, look what, Kurt, uh, look what uh, Uncle Vince did. Oh, look what Tony Khan is doing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but the bottom line is that money. And if you want to be seen right now, AEW is the way to go. And now, do, does he have that 90 day uh, non clause too, or no? You, you to be honest, I don't know. I don't know when's the last time we've seen him on TV. WrestleMania, right? Uh, yeah, that was the last time I remember seeing him on TV. Yeah, uh, yeah against uh, against uh, Randy Orton, and he was supposed That's... to win that match, and then they switched it to Orton winning, and then that was it. So I'm pretty sure something internally happened for him to be on the sidelines this long. I mean, we just saw yeah. Sasha Banks come out that come back last night, and nobody's seen her since April at uh, WrestleMania. You know what the, the thing is, and, and we keep trying to talk merchandise because uh, Bray Wyatt That's the is bottom a, line. It's the bottom line is merchandise. Yeah. It's the money, bro. Bray Wyatt is his own brand. Like, his right. brand is success. And at this point, why would you go anywhere else but AEW to match what your value is? You know can, what I'm saying? Like, can, he, can, he, can he use Bray Wyatt outside of WWE or no? no. You think no, you think or no? No, no, way. no way. So but he'll you know, so he'll go back to, to his original name then. Yeah, he could be Husky Harris, or he can come up with whatever, come up with a different well, match. And, can, and he, can, can he can he can he can he use Husky Husky Harris name too though or no? Because that doesn't that still belong to? I th- I th- I th- no, no, no. His his name is Wyndham Rotunda. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he could go to uh, use that. Yeah, they they named they named them after Barry Windham, the first name Windham, and then the last name being Mike Rotundo, which is his son. And and Bo Dallas, if people don't know that, they're related. Bo Dallas and the Bray Wyatt are brothers. Their father is Mike Rotunda. Their their cousin or family member is Barry Windham. The grandfather of the kids is Black Jack Mulligan, which is Barry Windham's father. If people didn't know that. So that's a big family uh, of, of, of generations of, of kids growing up in the wrestling business. So, so that, was right, that right there is like, what, second generation right there or third. And, and I'm going to ask you this and we can kind of get out of, you know, we can leave out of here. If you were him, and I hate doing this, right, because I would never tell someone where they should sign. And me and you, we're like that. Wherever you want to go and get the bag and do whatever you want to do, do what you got to do. If we're a fan of you, we support you. I don't like Ethan exactly. Carter. 
when yeah, Ethan Carter was Impact and he went to NXT, I was there and I listen. I went to NXT for the first time in my life. Just I, I remember, I remember, I remember. Listen, as soon as he came out, me, my son, the wife, we watched this match, got up and left. I had listen. I had an Impact Wrestling. I don't wear Impact Wrestling shit. I wear like the wrestlers. I had an Impact Wrestling T-shirt on to let everyone know there, and I'm talking crazy to people. As soon as he's this, I'm out. I, you know, I support the people I like. But here we go. If he goes to AEW, I can almost guarantee you from Jump Street, as soon as he comes out, who's he going to deal with? Cody Rhodes. Cody which Rhodes. Is, <laughs> which, which is going to piss me off, right? But would you rather be, would you rather be whatever his name is going to be in AEW – going for that TNT title, working your way up with the MJFs and the Chris Jericho eventually to get to the top, right? I don't know how they would book it, but I doubt they'd push him that far because, it, you know, he's not a, a former Bullet Club guy. Or if you go to Impact, you're already the best wrestler there. As soon as he steps into Impact, he's numero uno. Nope. If he goes to MLW, now this is where I'm not shitting on, on Impact to saying, Oh, I'm I'm just gonna shit on Impact and, and and favor MLW. I'm not because the difference between MLW and Impact, I feel Impact markets the wrong guys at the wrong time. How Moose hasn't been champ and doing his thing, I have no idea. But to this day, bro, it's been like what, like two, three years? He should have been champion by now. He should have won yeah. that belt when I was there at, at Slam Anniversary in Toronto, 2018. Or 2019, or I, I want to say, I, I think it was 2018, and he lost. And that's it. Like, this dude, he should have been champion by now. And the funny thing is, like you just said, Brad goes to Impact, he's the number one wrestler there. He goes to MLW, he's number one. Jacob for two and Hammerstone. See, that's, I'm glad you said that because that's where I was going. What they have done with Hammerstone, and I'm not going to say Jacob Fatu because he's the easy answer because he's been the heavyweight champ for two years. But if you look at if you look at how important Alexander Hammerstone is, the guy underneath Jacob Fatu, if Jacob Fatu loses to him, nobody goes, damn, I can't believe that reign was stopped by Hammerstone. No, Hammerstone is hot as shit. And they built up both of those two top players as one and two. But they're literally one and one because as soon as yep. Hamstall takes that belt, you're like, okay, now Fatu got to get there. Yep. So I would love to see him in any company outside of AEW because I think that he elevates your car on another level where AEW, I'm not even sure where he fits. Well, the funny thing is he goes to Ring of Honor. He's the number one if they yeah. put him baby face. Because all the heels are Mexicans. You got Roosh, who was the champion. Now you got Bandito, who's the champion, who's the babyface. But they're all Mexicans. He becomes your, your number one, how can I say this? Uh, number one non-American wrestler of the company. You know what I'm saying? So you, you could, you could, he could feud with them. If he goes to NWA, he's number two behind Magnus or Nick Aldis. But Impact, he'll be number one in Impact. He'll, like you said, he'll have, and, and, I, and I'll tell you something that I just thought right now. If his three months starts now, he'll be free by Bound for Glory, which is in October. So he'll be free by then. If if Omega is still champion by October, and I'm just saying, and there's a main event there for Bound for Glory, Omega and whoever. And Bro. he shows up there, dude, I will explode. The internet, Twitter would go crazy. Bray Wyatt is an impact wrestling. He just beat the shit out of Kenny Omega after Omega lost or Omega won or whoever the new champion of impact might be by October. He just came out and laid out their champion. Dude, oh, impact just went from down here to up here. Just risk, just risk, just rose up. If that ever happens, because I just did the calculation and the days on my head, he'll be a free agent by then. Mm. So mm. If, if that happens, 
if if Bray Wyatt decides, you know something, I, I'm done with the limelight. I, I want to go somewhere where I'm going to be appreciated. I want to go somewhere that they're going to make me their top guy and not bullshit me around. Or they're going to let me do my thing. I want to go where I'm going to feel comfortable this time around. I busted my ass for someone for years, did their stuff, did whatever they want me to do. If if I was happy with it or not, I did it. I didn't say one shit. Because you never saw Bray Wyatt not one time go on Twitter and complain about anything. From the Husky Harris to Bray Wyatt gimmick to the Fiend gimmick. Not one time. So, so he, it, might, he might want to go somewhere where he feels comfortable. And impact it, might give him that comfortability. You know what? And I'm going to agree with you one million percent because we all know he's made the bag what? 40 times. What? 40 times. You said what? No, you said what? What did you say? You're going to what? What? That you said you're going to agree with me a hundred, a thousand percent? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Hold on. What, what time was this? It was at 27.35. I got to write that down so I can go back and watch this. A bunch of times that like, you actually agree with me a thousand percent. That the that was, hell just throws. Holy shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa! You saw that? You saw that, Chuck? Chuck, you saw that, right? You saw that, right? Yes, sir. You saw that? You saw the pig? The pig just flew by. <laughs> I saw a pig just flew by. Oh, she goes Porky, Porky pig. That's all, folks. Listen, I'm, I'm shocked you. right now, bro. I'm shocked. No, you know what it is? Like, like I was, like I was saying, we all know he got the bag. He's made his money, and he, he's balling. So, if you decide, you know what, I'm going to go to a company. I'm going to elevate them. I agree with you, and I would like to see him in Impact. I think. If, Wait, okay, if, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What you just said right now? When was the last time we seen a wrestler do that? What you just said right now? I'm going to go here to elevate them. I I just love I just loved what you just said right now because that's what's missing in wrestling. Someone you know, who goes there to to try and elevate everybody in the company and not be selfish about it and just actually just I'm going to go here and and help them elevate. You know what the thing is and I was talking with Coral Kwan and I was telling him I said damn man I wish wrestlers Wherever they were, instead of trying to use their platform to then go to WWE or now AEW, I wish guys would say, I want this moment. And he flat out, you go on our interviews, and he was like, man, I really want to make MLW the next level. Like, he really wants MLW. He wants to be Mr. MLW, which is fucking fire. But with Bray Wyatt, if he goes to Impact, I agree. I already said I agree with everything you said. And if he comes out with BFG, he's a name big enough. Because, like I said, we know that uh, I don't want to make – like I said, it's hard because I don't want people to say, damn, Chef's always shitting on Impact. But Impact doesn't have a guy besides Moose that I feel could take the belt off of Kenny Omega. And yeah. I think if, if an Impact guy did, it would devalue everything what AEW is doing. But if Bray Wyatt comes over, that's not even a question. You're like, holy shit, Bray Wyatt's here. He took out Kenny Omega. You know, at that point, they do what they do. Impact focuses on what they do. Um, I would love to see that. But my my biasness is going to say, I would also love to see what Court Bauer and El Jefe would be able to create with Bray Wyatt and Azteca Underground. Because what they do and their minds, I think, would be insane. And you already know Lucha Underground has that... Uh, cinematic feel that they love yeah. to do so yeah. i would love to see that aspect of it but i think the smart money would be impact wrestling even though my biasness is going to sit here and tell you now nah, azteca underground but it only makes sense because if he pulls up bound for glory bfg breaks the internet impact takes another step and i guarantee you all the stars who go damn do i want to be an aew dark guy or do I want to go against the Mooses, Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan, and eventually Bray Wyatt? And, and you, you know, still- I, I, I know, another good point. You just, damn it, dude, you on a roll today, bro. I got to say this. Another good point you just said right now. 
do I want to be an AEW dark guy or elevation guy or am I going to be on dynamite? Because I hate to say this, but it's beginning to look like like you know who belongs in dark and elevation and who belongs in dynamite. I'm sorry to say that, but it's beginning to look like that. Dian, um, Diamante, Big Swole, the Acclaim, all the you, you begin to see all those guys, uh, Bear Country, they belong on Dark and Elevation. I, was, I mean, I don't see Diamante or Big Swole or anybody else of, of that down there being on Resurgence or even Dynamite anymore. Because you see them, you get used to them seeing them always on Monday and Tuesdays, always on Dark and Elevation. And they're beginning to get that name stuck to them now. Oh, it's Diamante. Oh, she's always on Dark and Elevation. And, and you always say that. Oh, she's always on Dark and Elevation. Yep. You don't see them anywhere else. Thunder Rosa, she's everywhere. Oh, that's Thunder that, Rosa. Oh, shit, that's dynamite. Well, yeah. yeah. Thunder Rosa, to me, is still the number one female wrestler on the planet, and I don't care what anyone thinks. Um, and, crazy, and she's small. You know what I mean? But the, she's, she's on another level. Yeah, but the, the thing is, now you mentioned, uh, 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 what's that group they have down on Elevation and Dark? With, uh, oh, God, what's his name? Uh, pretty P- uh, Peter Avalon and the other oh, three guys that he's always hanging with. Uh, I can't remember that. Uh, you got Benoni and another, another two guys. Those guys are elevation dark all day. Those guys belong in elevation and dark, period. You 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 will never, you rarely ever, you will, if you see them in, 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 in Dynamite or Resurgence, it's for, because for a squash match or or uh, um interview in the back for something going on. But you will never see those guys out of elevation and dark. They live there. And their names are already attached to that. And that's kind of sad to say that. But you, you made that good point about that. You know, the yeah. people that are already, you know, already belonging there, unfortunately. And that's what happens when uh, this company has so many different platforms and they're giving you a chance to wrestle. You're getting paid. They're making that money, so you know. I mean, I'm sorry, guys. We we need you in dark today in elevation. I mean, that that's what we got. Cody Rhodes is taking half an hour per episode God. with his uh, bullshit. Uh, the other the Nightmare Factory. What the hell is that about? What is that feud about? Like, why are they getting those guys belong in elevation and dark? Not on not on dynamite. Dude, they're you know, taking time for all the wrestlers that should be up there. I don't get that few at all. It's, uh, 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 it's, what's his brother's name? Um, Gold Dust. I love, Dust I love him. Dust, I love him. But he should not be having no matches on Dynamite. He should no. have matches with him and Nightmare Factory should be the main event on Elevation or Dark. Yep. And then with Lee Johnson. What you said, yeah, but that 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 goes to my point. Like, if all right, Bray Wyatt, obviously, cause we're talking Bray Wyatt. He he yeah, will never sorry. never be on darker elevation. He's he's a dynamite plus, right? Um, but there's another oh, guy. Sure. Yeah, there's another guy that I like. A guy like Elias. Um, uh, I think Elias could wrestle with anyone. I think he could talk with anyone. But what has he done in WWE and forever? I don't know. And if he goes to AEW, he's a dark guy. Uh, just, just because I'm a fan of the guy and think he's super talented and, and he should be on Dynamite, don't mean he's going to be on Dynamite. But if he goes anywhere else, he's towards the top tier of people's car. Yeah, exactly. 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 So, and, that's the, and that's the thing. A lot of these guys who are getting cut from WWE, there were, they, 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 they were somebody there mid-tier now they have a chance to either go to AEW and get stuck in the middle or go to the other four promotions, NWA, Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, MLW, where they'll be top tier right from the minute they walk in the door. They'll be the top five of that specific company. P- 
period. They'll get paid less, unfortunately. They'll be seen less because they don't have that, that, that great TV deals. But they'll get the respect that they've been wanting for a long time. And that's what I question some of these wrestlers. Are you going to the companies to help them improve? Because you want to prove you to them that I am a good wrestler and I'm going to help you elevate. I want that respect. Or do you want to go to AEW and get into the middle of the pack and get stuck on Monday or Tuesdays where you're going to get more shine on YouTube than TNT or TBS? Thanks. You know what? I think we killed this. And I'm going to let these people go with the tidbit because I got a little, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say what I got. Say I it, have, bro. Say it. Spit it no, out. No, no, no. I'm going to, because this is what we're going to do a podcast on this week. I have a feeling that MLW maybe had to bridge with another big company, not NWA, not Ring of Honor, hint, hint, hint. And it's not AEW or WWE neither. I think there's a bridge that's being gapped, and I think that we might start seeing a crossover. So I think it's time we do a show on MLW and somebody else becoming partners because something cryptic I seen on the last thing that they posted, I was like, oh, shit, that looks like something the owl would do. Hit, hit, hit. All right. So, All right, we'll, we'll save it. We'll save it for the other one. So, ladies and gentlemen, Y'all know what it is. It's UrbanWrestlingNetwork.com. Same name, same dot com. It's for myself, Evil Onsay. We out of here. Deuces.